Running your bed at the speed of sound. Got places to go, got to follow my rainbow. It's hard not to look back on Sonic Adventure 2 with some level of nostalgia. Me and my friends are still jamming out to City Escape 20 years later. 20 goddamn years. And for a while it was untouchable. It was a game loved and cherished by fans across the board. And now that we're in the ninth generation of video game consoles, it's hard to ignore some of the more glaring issues that exist within the game. Welcome to the Sonic Adventure 2 Battle is a masterpiece, a timeless classic. Who do you think you are to- Listen, I love Sonic Adventure 2 just like anyone else, and even though this game has a special place in my heart, it just hasn't aged all that well. Hell, even if you compare it to games that came out around its time, it's clearly not as polished. The best levels make up one third of the total content, and even if you enjoy hunting for emeralds, I doubt a lot of you enjoy the Tails and Eggman levels. The lip syncing is non-existent, and super strong. the sound isn't balanced, Jumping between rails is essentially Russian roulette, tank controls for Tails and Eggman, only one emerald showing up at a time on your radar, mad space, and while the story is still better than other Sonic titles, it's still a mess. I mean, what purpose did it serve for Eggman to blow up that island? Why is the president consulting with terrorists while he's riding in a limo around town? How do people mistake this anthropomorphic creature for this one? I mean, they're two different colors! And with all these problems, how did the game explode in popularity on its release and cement itself as a classic? Fucking chows. The chows were cute little things that you got to raise in between levels. You'd hatch them from chow eggs and watch them try to drown themselves. According to Sonic lore, Chows used to be the guardians of the Master Emerald, which is Ooh. fucking ridiculous. So if you never had the pleasure of babysitting these adorable little dumbasses, Chow Garden is a bonus minigame virtual pet breeding side game simulator, I guess. You hatch eggs, and based on who you use to raise them, you can evolve them, race them, battle with them, make them fly, put them in a school, start a band, kill them, in order to level up your chow so they wouldn't get their ass cheeks clapped in karate, you gotta feed them these crystals or tiny animals. Oh god. You can only find these in the main levels. Crystals through enemies and animals and cages and pipes. It's easy enough to collect a large supply of crystals and animals just by playing through the levels. This added a really engaging side objective to levels and an aspect of replayability that we hadn't seen in Sonic games prior to the Adventure series. I mean, I beat the game and then go replay City Escape over and over and over and over! When we get our typical platforming games, the only incentive we have to go back and replay the levels usually comes in the form of collectible items to 100% the game. Meaning that unless you're a complete Completionist, speedrunner, or just really fucking love Sonic the Hedgehog. Chili dogs! There's not much incentive to replay adventure, especially nowadays when we get new games every month to distract us. But Chow single handedly changed this formula. Now you had a reason to keep playing to search for a skunk so your chow can fart. You have to replay the core game to expand the side game, not just go through levels watching a number slowly scooch up to 100. This idea of the main game and side game working together is something you don't see often in video games. And it's especially obvious there was a lot of thought put into chows, way more than you would expect of a side game. Between stats, nature, activities, and customization, Chow Garden could easily stand on its own. It's unfortunate that we don't get these kind of engaging side games placed into more modern releases. I mean, normally side games serve as a separate entity entirely from the main game, only there is more of an afterthought. If a game is going to place a side game in its world, it should at the very least be fun and relative to the world. Like in the way Gwent from The Witcher was fun enough to establish its own independent game, which let's be honest, I think we'd all be excited for an independent Chow Garden game. As far as seeing the Chow Garden again in a newer title, Sega has been anything but clear as to whether they are willing to recreate what made Sonic Adventure so special. But at the moment, there are a few fan-made games and mods that will scratch that itch. Sega was really onto something, and it's kind of a shame that they never capitalized on such a great idea. Hopefully we get to see the Chow Garden return in the future, as long as the game isn't like 06. <laughs> Happy holidays, my Chow-loving friends. Thank you for taking the time to watch the video all the way through. I'd like to thank all my Patreon supporters for helping support me and allow me to keep creating these videos for you guys. I feel like I should mention that everything I said in this video is my own opinion. So if you disagree with me and think Sonic Adventure 2 is a great game and has no flaws, go, go have fun with it. I will see you all in the next video, but until then, take care of yourself.